Ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between, welcome to Talking at Six. I am your host, One Six. AKA Back Alley Doctor. AKA Don't ask what's in the croquettes. AKA Technically a Magical Girl Show. AKA Those teenagers scared the living shit out of me. AKA Commonly Swill Kids, which is just basically a James and Soap Panda ones. A.K.A. World Domination. A.K.A. 1-6. Star Goku uniform. A.K.A. Guts going nuts. Boo. Too easy. We expect better from you. A.K.A. What's an anime? A.K.A. And this is why we should hate pants. A.K.A. Not so bad a dad after all. A.K.A. Just so we're clear, I'm terrible with Japanese names. In today's episode, I'll be discussing slash reviewing the 2013 anime, Kill a Kill. And just a heads up, I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible, but there will be some minor and potentially major, depending on how tangents go, spoilers for the series. But for those of you that haven't seen it, Kill a Kill is an anime series about a character named Ryu- Ryuko Matoi, who is a Japanese schoolgirl, kind of kind of like punk rock, kind of edgy look to her. She's basically the general plot of it is she's trying to avenge her dad's death, like her strange dad. Like she was sent off to a boarding school at a young age, but her and her dad were kind of like distant. And like he called her back to the house one day and she shows up, he's there bleeding out from a fucking stab wound. Where someone stabbed him with a giant pair of scissors, but only half of the scissors are still there. And so she makes it her mission to set out and find his killer and avenge his death. She ends up taking the scissors that he was stabbed with, the half of the scissors that he, scissors that he was stabbed with, turned into a sword known as a scissor blade, which is, like, extremely powerful and can, be like, super dope. She's, like, been training with it and, like, super talented with it and shit. And as the series goes on, she gets better with it and, like, unlocks new abilities or just discovers new forms it can take and or like just builds it up they don't really go too much into how like it transforms or how she knows it can transform or how she does the transformations or like if she installed transformations or what they don't really go too much in the tech of the scissor blade itself but like it gets dope like classic anime shit you know it does different shit throughout the series it does whatever it really needs to do as it goes on as it, as they go on but uh yeah basically the plot basically hey, she co- pulls up into a town where like just past where the house was around the house and she ends up like getting enrolled in this school where like everyone like everyone all every students like status like their living status like where they live at where they're at in the world this entire this one school can controls this entire town so like the higher level students as top tier students live in like nice really nice houses and like really have like a lot of money and really expensive things and like as you as your ranking in the school goes down you get poorer and poorer so eventually like the bottom students known as one stars who have like no so have no stars on their uniforms or in their school uniforms basically just live in like squalor like complete like shanty towns basically and that's where Ryuko, Ryuko ends up because like she has no family her dad's dead she never knew her mom so she's like orphan and just kind of just rolled into town like you know just on her own she's just going through town whatever like trying to find her you know on the path of adventure that's that she rolls into town and like she i think can fully remember i think she like gets mother skit tries to mug her and, like, it's like gang of little kids trying to mug her. And she ends up beating them all down. And eventually, like, the leader of that gang, like, his older sister ends up becoming friends with Ryuko. Her name is Maki. Like, the kid's sister's name is Maki. She's hilarious. More on her later. But her and Ryuko end up becoming best friends. And, like, Ryuko moves in, moves in with her family and, like, stays with them throughout the series. And, like, lives with them so she has a place to stay in town. And they help her out throughout the, her whole quest, you know, to adventure dad's death and whatever find her dad's killer and everything <laughs> but like yeah like there's like super poor like dirt like houses like made out of just like scrap metal basically but her dad's a doctor so it's funny it's like her dad's a there's super poor shit but her dad's a doctor because because he's a back because he's like because of uh Ma, maki yeah because maki's ranking the school is so low she's a zero star student and like her rank is so low they live in complete squalor her dad's a back alley doctor so he's like basically just like shady almost like criminal doctor basically like, now he's not Actually, criminal himself, but he does do criminal shit. Like, he's not... Like, he doesn't make his money from crime, but, like, they have to resort to, like, stealing and shit just to get by a lot of times. So, like, he's basically, like, a mob doctor, but, like, 
<laughs> not with no actual mob connections because with no actual mob connections, he just broke the shit. But it's so funny because, like, <laughs> it's like eventually there's one part of the series, like, minor spoiler, there's one point where, like, they move up in rank, where, like, they end up starting, they end up moving up in rank, Maki moves up in rank until they get more money. And so, like, he eventually becomes, oh, he actually becomes, like, a better doctor. He gets a better do- doctor office. He gets a better office. He gets a better practice. He gets, a, he's more accredited. You know, he becomes a bigger deal. He's more respected as a doctor. And it's, like, as his rank goes up, he's more and more respected. But it's funny because, it's like, he's the same guy. Like, he's the same, like, even, like, even at the bottom. Like, he still has, still has the same medical skill. So, eventually, like, he's still, like, when he's down at the bottom, he's still, like, losing patients. And, like, his patients are dying on him. He's, like, people are barely surviving and shit. And it's, like, I guess it's never really acknowledged of, is he just a bad doctor? Is it because he has limited tools to work with? But, like, as it moves up, he becomes, like, more higher respected doctor and a better pra- medical, pra- medical practice and better offices and shit. He almost, like, does less and less work because, like, the joke of, like, you know, the higher you are, the higher ranking you are, the better you are at what you do, the higher paid you are for what you do, the better, higher you are in your field, the actual less work you do with it. It's kind of like how, like, chefs, I don't know if you know y'all saw it, but gotta get the same. The the way chefs are, like, the higher up the ranking the chef is, the less actual work they do in the kitchen. Eventually, you just become the face of the kitchen. You don't actually cook any of the food. You just train everyone under you to cook the food, and, like, you critique them and, like, make them do better. But at the end of the day, you're mostly just doing paperwork. It's kind of shitty. But, like, anyway, back to the, back to the series plot. Like, it's essentially, like, I know what you're asking. Whoa, how does this separate from any other anime? What makes this different than any other fucking high fighting high school anime? Like, off oh, this fighting anime. Any other high school, like, fighting high school anime. And honestly, like, just... I don't fully know. I haven't seen a lot of high. I'm gonna be honest. I'm not haven't seen a lot of anime in general. I haven't seen a lot of fighting animes. I don't. But I really enjoy the story. Like I think the story is dope. It's really great plot. It's only one season. It's 24 episodes. And honestly, like if they would have drawn like the fights were like the fights aren't even like half that was only be a fight. The fights are like anywhere from like like two to like five minutes of like thirty and there's like thirty minute episodes. Like if they really wanted to, this shit only did this only did 24 episodes in one season they really wanted to they could have like cut they could have stretched these out like dragon ball z style and stretched out a fight to be like where each individual fight could have been like two three episodes on its own and made this series twice as like twice or even three times as long they could have really stretched out the runtime of the show and i'm kind of glad they didn't because it makes it better like it's such like the story hits so much harder when it's like not just it doesn't focus on the fight for three episodes to the point where you forget what the fuck they're fighting for it's like no shade on dragon ball z i love dragon ball z when i was younger i haven't watched it forever I'm not saying it's bad now, like, I won't watch it now because it's bad, like, I just haven't watched it forever, but, like, Dragon Ball Z really did that shit, and, like, they, like, one fight would be half the season. It's, like, every saga was, like, the big bad villain, and they get to the villain, and it'd be, like, 12 episodes of them fighting a the fucking villain because, like, the first, like, two episodes is everybody else getting washed, completely stomped the fuck out. Three episodes in, and by episode three, Goku shows up, and Goku, episode three, Goku shows up at the end of the episode. So they don't fight. Episode four is just Goku, Goku talking, Goku and the villain talking shit to each other, filling filling out the story, filling each other in on what happened in the plot. Then episode five is Goku, who's like Goku. They go, they finally fight, and Goku realizes, oh, they're both like, oh man, you know, you're Disney powerful, you're Disney powerful. Guess what? This is my, this is my final form. This is my final form. Episode six, they fucking both start powering up. Episode seven, the villain reaches full power, and everybody else has to stall them. Six, the villain finally reaches full power, and everyone has to stall them out so Goku can keep charging. Episode seven, Goku finally charges, but then talks enough shit, talks more than the rest of the episode talking shit. Episode eight, he finally starts fucking fighting the villain. Episode nine, the villain's like on his last rush to get the final monologue for the villain, and Goku kills him. Episode ten, the shit finally ends. It's like, ah oh, man, yeah, they go back, then they go try to go back to fix shit. What I'm getting at it is, Kill the Kill doesn't do that. It doesn't, like, the fights are, like, not necessarily super quick, but, like, they're, like, to the point, they're deep, but they are intricate, they're detailed, they're great animation, like, they're great, they're dopely animated, the fight, the art style is so dope. It's also more of a, like, a hand-drawn anime, less of, like, a, like, classic, like, it's, like, old-school hand-drawn, less CGI, there's, like, it's not a, like, CGI, like, new school style with the giant eyes and giant anime eyes and, like, the super popping colors and what you would expect from anime, especially since the show came out in 2013, like, this is what, 100% what you expect it to be all done on computer with, like, super bright neon colors and the giant eyes and, like, over... I don't even want to say overly, like, overly, like, drawn char- characteristics or overly animated characters because it has that. It's just big stone, but because of the art style, it doesn't seem as, like, it's not as jarring. It's not as, like... It doesn't seem... It almost doesn't seem as over the top. Like, Maki, the side... She's just a sidekick. She's a sidekick. Uh, Riko's best friend. 
she's like super animated and super over the top and super like high energy is crazy because like she also like falls asleep in class a lot because she has to get up so because her friend lives in poverty because they're so poor like they're so far down like literally the school like itself sits on top of a hill and like the town itself is like a ranking like rankings based on the tower so like literally the lower students are like lower down the hill or at the bottom of the hill so they have to get up earlier to get the class the kick on the trolley to get the class at the same time as everyone else whereas like the higher up students have like have like they have like specialized shuttles that are personalized shuttles for them and they don't really have you know it takes a little effort whereas if you're a low ranking student you have to get up insanely early to catch this trolley to go all the way up the hill so <laughs> maki is like constantly tired she's always like falling asleep in class and just struggling to stay awake because she's so tired because she has to get up so early to get to school that like you know <laughs> she gets like no sleep but also like she's also like super when she's like excited when she's passionate about something she talks a lot she's like super energetic she's almost like a the classic like looney tune style almost she's like classic like tex avery she's kind of like a bugs bunny character almost like so high energy and so like off the wall and like wacky but like it's dope as fuck because she has like personality like but also like ryuko Ryuko, who's the main character, also has her own personality. She's, like, kind of edgy. Like, you know, she's the edgy. doesn't really care about anything. I'm too cool for this shit place. But also, like, she respects that Ma that Maki is so... Respects Maki's personality. And, like, she understands, like, she's over top. And, like, as time goes on, she grows to, like, embrace it. And, like, oh, accepts her for who she is. And, you know, and, like, that's cool. Because, honestly, from the vibe you get from it, like, you don't really see a Mot from the other kids at the school. But it almost seems like... The other kids almost in per almost like purposely avoid avoid Maki or like don't necessarily want to associate with her, like so the student council president, whose name I'm blanking on right now. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I can get it. I can get it. Uh, Lady Satsuki. Do not remember her first name. Also, I'm horrible with Japanese names, which is why I don't know Maki's last name. But <laughs> Lady Satsuki, who is the head of the student body council, and she also has a team. The rest of the student council is her elite four who are, like, the top fighters at the school. They're top tier. They're, like, they're all captains of different clubs. So the way it breaks down is, like, the way the school breaks down is every captain of, the captain of every club gets a Goku uniform. So Goku uniforms are, like, powerful suits that can, like, transform in battle and give you extra power. And so the captains of every club get a Goku uniform. The higher clubs get higher stars. So, like, there's the no stars, who just have regular school uniforms. There's the one star, who are usually, like, either captains or, like, High-ranking members of a higher-ranking club get one-star uniforms, which are decently powerful. Two-star uniforms are more powerful. So I think three-star star, three star is either three or four-star is the most powerful, and that's what the Elite Four all have. Three-star is the most powerful. Three-star is the most powerful uniform, and the Elite Four all have three-star uniforms because they're student body council, so they're direct, they work directly for Lady Skotsky, but they also like are ahead of their old individual clubs. And, like, she found, like, they, it actually, so actually goes through how she met each one of them and like, gives them their own backstory, which is really dope. Because I feel like a lot of shows don't do that. <laughs> don't do that enough. Or, like, they'll give you backstory in a character and then kill them off. These characters, spoiler, but these characters all survive all the way through the series. I don't think any, like, actual, like, big deal main character that you, like, get attached to actually gets killed off ever. Once again, spoiler, sorry. But it's, like, also, but it's also done in a dope way where it's, like, yeah, it doesn't really bother you that they're not killed off. It's, like, oh... They just not saying like, oh, they have plot armor, so they they don't die. They they do, do lose fights though. You know, they can still get faded. They can still get knocked out. They can still get beat down. They aren't necessarily untouchable, but they do like have a high ranking in the school and they do survive all through. <laughs> but yeah, but members of the four are there's a hacker, like his uniform is basically based on like technology and like his hacking ability and kind of like turns like a robotic suit. And then there's, like, the blind swordsman. Well, technically he's not... Okay, spoiler. He starts off as just a regular swordsman, then he, like, he blinds him. So he's really great, really talented, really fast. But then, like, he blinds himself because he loses to Ryuko. Because he, like... She, like, finds a way to move faster than him. So he has to blind himself to rely on his other senses. Because, according to him, his eyes lie to him. Because someone that became faster than him, his eyes lied to him, so now he fights entirely based off of, like, his other senses, so he doesn't count on speed. So he becomes even, somehow makes him even faster, because he's not looking, he doesn't actually look where he goes, he, like, basically becomes, he basically becomes Daredevil. Like, he sees, he sees through sound, basically, and, like, dude's crazy. Like, his uniform goes from, like, being just, like, kind of cool, like, 
almost night suits, like this giant fucking mech with like kendo suit with kendo stick arms. It's crazy. It's super dope. And then there's the band leader who's like she's Lady Sasuke's like oldest friend. They were friends like since like kindergarten basically and they like stick together. They stuck together for long. She's always had her back and they always like work together and shit. And she's like a band lead. She's like the leader of like the band club or like orchestra club or something like that. And so her suit, like her suit, like becomes a band director's uniform. And it like all its powers are like music related and like drums and like it shoots music notes and like can turn into a jet pack. And like it's crazy, dude. It's super nuts. Then there's also the head of the disciplinary committee. And his suit is like the weirdest so i'm gonna be right i'm gonna be realist right now this show has like a lot of fan servicey moments and if you don't know what fan service means like look it up just google it trust me it you, you'll do better to find out on your own but like a lot of animes have it but like yeah anime if you don't know what it means just look up anime fan service you'll thank me later or you won't but i'd rather you do that than i'm not gonna tell you anyway <laughs> anyway his suit, like, his whole thing is, like, he's, like, super strict about the rules and, like, punishment, but also, like, standing up for what he believes in. Like, his beliefs are super strong, and he really supports any cause that he cares about. He supports it 100%, and he's super, like, pro-rules and, like, supports the rules, so he's the head of the disciplinary committee. And, like, his suit is basically, like, his, sorry, not suit, his uniform basically, like, it's almost like it, like, wraps him up like a mummy, and, like, it absorbs all, like, attack like all enemy attack and all like power from the enemy attack and like multiplies it and sends it back out like twice as strong and like when he's fighting Ryuko like Ryuko ends up in a fight with him when she's fighting him like she figures that out and so she stops hitting him but then like his suit his uniform also has the ability like if you won't punish him his uniform will punish itself will punish his uniform he punishes himself with his uniform like like the wraps will like some wraps will come loose and just start whipping him and like powering him up because it takes the power that it absorbs and sends it back, and multiplies it, and sends it back, so, like, he'll start whipping himself to beef up his uniform, and it's, so his uniform start whipping himself, and build up the power to beef him up, and, like, it's honestly one of the craziest fucking fights of the series, I generally do not remember how it ends, I cannot remember how it ends, but it's, like, so crazy, but, like, he's, like, overly dedicated to Lady Sasuke, like, because he respects her honor, like, he respects her, because, like, I forgot why. I forgot, like, it's, like, something about, like, her willpower. Like, her willpower is so strong because that's another thing about him is, like, he's, like, strong-willed. He sticks to his word. Like, he stands up for the little guy. So he stands up for anyone who, like, believes in what they could cost. And honestly, it's kind of funny because, like, throughout the series, they kind of hint at it. Like, there's kind of, like, a... They never fully say it, but there's kind of, like, a little, like... Seems like he kind of has a little crush on Maki because of Maki being, like, she's a zero. She's a no-star. She's a no-star student. She's literally the bottom of the class. Like, he calls her a slacker and is like, ah, you're, you know, you're an underachiever and blah, blah, blah. Like, you're so terrible, blah, blah, all this about Maki. And, like, but she never gives up. Like, she constantly is, like, determined. She constantly has heart. She keeps, she has a lot of heart. She keeps getting back up no matter how hard you knock her down. Maki, like, literally has, like, no powers, has no real fight ability. But she keeps getting up no matter what. She keeps trying her hardest and do, like, respects that. Like, this is one of his big things. Like, he really respects people who do that shit. So he kind of, like... He, as the series goes on, he starts to respect her more and almost kind of like seems like he develops a little crush on her, but they never fully like express that. They fully said that, never fully dive into it, never really fully say that. But like, kind it's kind of there. It's one of those like you kind of had to like you know you gotta infer, you make your own decisions. You know you can decide for yourself if that's what's happening or not. But like, it's also like awesome and it's like really funny like subplot wise. Not necessarily a full subplot, but a little like you know subliminal math, subliminal like storyline a little subliminal lining in there like little things to take for yourself which i really respect about the show super dope but also speaking of maki at one point ryuko like because ryuko's whole thing is she believes that lady satsuki is actually tells her that she knows she has information on who killed her dad so ryuko like tries to fight her and like you can't go to her directly straight up you can't go straight to her directly because she's the head of the student council so you have to work your way up to her so in order to do that Ryuko, like, ends up in fights with, like, multiple club captains. It starts with the club captains. It starts off with her fighting, I want to say it's the boxing club captain. She fights him first, and then, like, she ends up in a fight with the tennis club because Maki used to be a member. Maki was a member of the tennis club, but she kept showing up to practice late because it was, like, taking forever to get to school. So she kept, like, showing up to practices late, so they go to kick her out. Instead of just, like, kicking her out, they give her, like, I think it was, like, a hundred tennis ball salute or something. Like, they were all just going to smack, they, like, tied her up and just going to smack tennis balls at her. All, like, slap tennis, smack tennis balls at her. 
and like Ryuko stops him. She's like, "Yo, that's messed up. You can't just pelt her with tennis balls. It's, you know, that's not cool." And so she saves, she saves Maki, and ends up fighting the tennis captain herself, which turns out, which is where we get one of the variations of the scissor blade because eventually she uses it to become. She turns it into a tennis racket. Because, like, she tries to use a regular tennis racket, but the cat, tennis captain, tennis club captain has a Goku uniform. So she transforms into her, her uniform, has this giant tennis racket, and she's destroying her. So Ryuko turns the scissor blade into a fucking tennis racket and fights back. But also, a bigger part, I forgot, I can't believe I got this wrong when I was saying it. A really big part of, like, where a lot of Ryuko's power comes from is her Kamui, which is kind of like a Goku uniform. Okay, so, like, Goku uniforms are uniforms made with these things called life fibers which are part of an alien race that came to Earth and they were a parasite that attached themselves to the smartest living thing on Earth. And then eventually they attached themselves to humans and then basically controlled humans into sewing life fibers into clothes. And their whole, like, life fibers whole, like, plan is to take over the world completely, is to brainwash humans completely, take over them completely and control the world, control Earth, and then just go from planet, go throughout the universe from planet to planet, like, and controlling the smartest beings and then completely taking over the planet and destroying it and then moving on. But Goku uniforms, so the star level you Goku uniform is based on the percent of life fiber it has. So like a one star uniform is ten percent, a two star uniform is twenty percent, a three star uniform is thirty percent. But Kamui a Kamui is made from a hundred percent life fibers. And Ryuko has a Kamui made spoiler. Her Kamui is made from by her dad, specific, specifically made by for her by her dad, and it's called uh, Zen. It's called damn uh, Sin Kids Kamui Sin Kids, and her Kamui like is like it's a sailor, basically looks like a sailor uniform, like almost like uh like say imagine like Sailor Moon's uniform, like what Sailor Moon wears, like a sailor's guy uniform, it's basically sailor uniform, but it's a living being, and it's crazy because like only Ryuko can hear him talk. Like, Kamui, like Sin Kits talks to her, and only, she's the only one that can hear him. Like, she talks back to him and shit, but everybody else is just like, she's talking to her clothes. So everyone thinks she's crazy. But he actually talks to her, and she's the only one that can hear him. But then, like, he transforms. Like, it transforms. Sin Kits tra- transforms into a more powerful form, and, like, that's what she uses in fights. And so, in the battle with the Tennis Cup captain, like, Sin Kits transforms. She transforms Sin Kits and then takes the scissor blade and turns it into a, into a tennis racket. But... Life fibers, the uniforms are made out of, life fibers are, like, insanely strong. They're basically, like, the strongest steel. Like, they're, they're thread, but they're basically the strongest steel. And, like, they can read. They can heal themselves. They can recover super fast. They can regenerate super fast. So you have to be, like, insanely fast to cut them. But the only thing that can't, or you have to use a scissor blade. The scissor blades, which are the only things that can actually cut life fibers. The only that can, like, permanently cut life fibers. And so... Ryuko has, like, one of the only weapons that can be used against life fiber, so anytime she fights a captain, it's ultimately, like, it's, like, they're extremely powerful because they're Goku uniforms, but she also has the scissor blade, which can actually, dis- there's the only thing that can actually destroy their uniforms, and when she does destroy them, she actually gets, like, a life, one of the life fibers from that goes into Sin Kits, making Sin Kits more powerful. Also, Sin Kits, like, goddamn, sorry, super, like, long-winded rant, but Sin Kits, feeds off of her blood basically like she has this, like wristband she has on that has she wears like kind of glove that has like a key in it when she takes it out like it like cuts her so sin kids can like because it sin kids is fueled by her blood like it literally powered by her blood so the power of her blood fuels her so she like starts to get low on blood like starts to lose so much blood she starts to lose power and sin kids starts to fall off she has to like calm down she has to stop fighting or like she'll like pass out in battle because she could potentially die or it's like the more like angry she is the hotter her blood runs the like the more powerful Sin Kits becomes, but also the harder it gets to control. The more it loses control, the more intense everything becomes. And, like, it's super crazy. But all this, I'll say all this just gets to the point of, eventually, like, in order to move up the time, to move up the power rankings, Ryuko starts her own club. She starts a fight club. But because becoming the captain of the club comes with a bunch of paperwork, she makes Maki the captain of the fight club while Ryuko goes on fights takes on other clubs in their name and <coughs> excuse me as she does this like they move up in ranking they become a higher the store the club becomes higher ranked they get better status in the school they get higher status in school they get better living status and that's when like Maki's dad becomes a better gets a better uh medical practice and all that but as their family moves up from nothing to like having much all this money 
they actually get like super greedy and like start to lose who they were like because when they're poor they're like the super close-knit family super tight like her mom is a great cook like the food is all like made out of like trash like made out of scraps but like it tastes great and the family all like they all eat dinner together every night and they're super close and they're super tight-knit bunch like their dog whose name is guts who's like basically his pug he's hilarious dude. he's awesome but like he eats dinner with him like he eats at the table with him like straight up like scooby news like scooby and shaggy style like everybody's like bashing classic anime eating like goku naruto pretty much any anime character like any anime main character how they just bash off food super fast the whole family eats like that including guts and he eats at the table with him and like he's just basically like no he's a dog but like he like he barks but he also can say guts <laughs> like he can also say his name but that's pretty much it but like he also like you know clearly like sentient like clearly has like some like clearly smarter than the average dog but also like he's just another part he's just another member of the family he's there with him and like I'm mean, so back to like this is I'm dropping around sorry but this fits in with the whole like fan service thing the whole family not the whole family but like uh Maki's dad her brother and including guts are kind of like hate to say it like not in a super bad way was not side offended but they're like kind of pervy but like they kind of like basically like they spy on Ryuko sometimes and like not trying to justify it anyway like it's almost play for comedy like she catches on realizes it and like beats the shit out of him every time she catches him. But, like, it's just kind of funny, like, the classic, like, anime nosebleed shit. But, like, it's the dad, the brother, the dad, the little brother, and Guts is also there. Like, the dog's always there, too. <laughs> it's just the funniest shit. But like, there's one episode where, like, uh, Maki's mom watches, washes Sin Kits. Because, like, oh, your uniform is the only, pretty much it's, like, the only clothes Maki, uh, Ryuko has. Like, it's the only uniform, it's her only uniform. It's, like, pretty much the only thing she has. So, she's, like, her mom's, like, yeah, but the thing is dirty, you gotta wash it. She washes it. And, like, they have to get it to her because, like, Ryoko's, like, in this giant fight at school and this big deal and really has to get her. So her dad's, like, so Maki's dad's, like, rushing there. And then, like, the car, like, his car, they get in the car wreck. And so the little brother takes over and he starts carrying it. I think he's, like, on a bike and he crashes. And, like, he hands off the Guts, like, Guts, it's up to you. And Guts, like, takes off running with the uniform. <laughs> it's so funny. Like, so, like, it was, like, yeah, you know, they're kind of creepy. They're kind of pervy. But, like, at the end of the day, like, they have good intentions. They do mean well. They are there for Maki. They're there for Yuko and Maki when they need them. And, like, Maki's always there for Riko constantly. Like, she keeps her calm. Like, literally, just her being around is, like, the only thing that ever calms her down. And, like, Riko, my, damn, not Riko. Riko, yeah, Riko, like, gets in, like, situations where, like, she gets in fights. She gets too intense. She gets too angry. She can't control herself. Like, Maki's the one that has to bring her back down, has to bring her back to life, has to get her back to normal. That's a reminder of who she is and what she's fighting for and why she's there and what she's doing. And, like, Maki just never gives up and, like, always has a, like, super spunky spirit. Like, she's, like, Maki is literally the perfect, like, wacky sidekick. If I had to, like, have to pick a wacky sidekick, she is the perfect wacky sidekick. Like, it's so great. Whoever, like, wrote this character, whoever did the show, whoever wrote for her, nailed it, dude. Like, she's, like, one of the perfect characters. Like, Maki would not work as a main character. As a main character, she'd be too much. She'd be too annoying. She'd be, like, too over the top as a main character. But she works perfectly as that side character. Or, like, the sidekick, where, like, she's perfect to, like, the hero, or, like, the hero doesn't have to have, doesn't really do as much. At the same time, Ryuko does, like, have a deeper, like, sit you know, does kind of a deep story, have a deeper personality, has more to her, like, she's, but she starts off as, like, the super edgy, you know, like, almost kind of like Raven, it's almost kind of like how Raven from Teen Titans, like, balances out with Beast Boy, like, Beast Boy kind of balances her out. It's kind of like that, but almost, like, Maki's almost, I want to say, necessarily say better, because Beast Boy's a dope character, but, like, it's the kind of a different vibe because how like re basically is like if Rio goes Raven, Maki's Beast Boy, and like it perfectly levels her out. They're together all the time, whereas in T Titans, like, you know, it just anyway, it like levels her out. So even when like you go like two, three episodes, like or like shit'll be going like super intense for a while. And Ryu goes like super intense, super crazy, like super determined, have to fight this guy, have to fight this villain, have to fight this person, super just non stop going constantly, super building up. And then like Maki will show up and like calm her down and get her back to normal or like She's, like, the comic relief slash, like, gets the character, gets Ryuko back to base, gets her back in touch with who she really is and what she's there for and what her ultimate goal is and reminds her, like, why she's actually doing this. Don't get consumed by the anger. Don't get lost in it. But, dude, it's such a dope show. Like, honestly, this is crazy. Like, well, it's kind of small. God damn. Ah, I just remember what I was trying to go to. Sorry. What I was getting at was the Fight Club, Maki, Mako. Not Mako. Is it Maki? Fuck. What is her name? I'm so sorry. I kind of messed this up, man. It's been... Her name is Mako. God damn it. The, the psychic's name is Mako, not Maki. Ugh. I told you. I'm terrible with Japanese names. All right? Shit's hard to remember. 
But anyway, Ryuko makes Mako the captain of the fight club. And eventually, like, it gets to the point where, like, the student head of the student body council, Lady, Lady Setsuki, makes Ryuko either, makes Ryuko fight Maki. Like, makes her fight for fucking, like, whether on the club is the ground. And, like, at this point, Mako is, like, crazy with power. She's gone crazy with greed. Like, the money has corrupted her, corrupted her family. That like, they're gone. They completely lost themselves in the greed. To where, like, Mako actually has, like, and they give Mako a two-star Goku uniform, which is super dope. It's, like, this leather duster, like, almost, like, bomber, like, military jacket almost. Like, not leather duster, but, like, military jacket, but, like, leather. And, like, this little captain's hat, like, this leather, like, black captain's hat. And, like, she has this fucking, she has this ring, she has this five-finger ring with her name on it. And she has, like, a spiked bat. And, like, like her uniform just makes all these weapons. And it's her versus Ryuko. And, like, she's, like, legit keeping up with Ryuko. Because eventually, eventually, like, Ryuko gives up and stops fighting her. Like, doesn't quit, doesn't surrender in the fight. But she stops fighting Mako because she doesn't want to hurt her. And, like, this is the point of, like, literally Mako, like, almost kills Ryuko. And finally, like, snaps back to her senses and, like, finally breaks free of the greed and realizes what was happening. It's like, why didn't anybody stop me? And eventually, like, her family, when that happens, her family realizes, like, how consumed by greed they become. And they all break free and, like, throw away all the fucking, like riches and everything and just break down this really sweet touching moment where like they're all like crying and hugging like apologizing for like becoming complete jerks with the money letting the money corrupt them and shit it's such a great feeling dude it's such a great story it's such a great show i highly recommend checking out checking out if you're a fan of anime you should check it out even if you're not a fan of anime you just like dope shit in general you just like animation in general you should definitely check out kill the kill it's currently on hulu I believe it's also on Crunchyroll. You could probably find it. I think it might even be on Netflix now too. Like you can pretty much find it anywhere, anywhere you can find it. I highly recommend, highly recommend checking it out. Highly recommend watching, watching it all the way through. It's only twenty four episodes. They're thirty minutes. They're dub and sub. Whichever one floats your boat. Whichever one you prefer. But they're both great. It's so awesome. Could not recommend it more. But uh, I think it's about time I got out of here because it's getting kind of hot and I've been talking for a while. But uh. Thank you for checking out the channel. Thank you. If you haven't already, please like the channel. Subscribe. Please like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter at Talk That Six. Follow me on Facebook at Talking That Six. And whatever you do, whatever you go, remember, I got nothing, man. I was just bullshitting. But uh, thanks to you for checking out the episode. And if you have any suggestions for shows I should watch, intro names for the, the funny names that go to intro, funny bits that would be an in intro. Things you want to hear me talking about, things you want to see me, re things you want me to revisit, or uh, if you have a great like exiting tagline because I do not have one, please, please feel free to send that to me. And thank you for checking this out. I'll be back. Peace.